Can bone broth replace collagen supplements for skin and joint and bone health? Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Mills, holistic medical doctor providing natural root cause solutions for your health concerns. And today on the Wild Wisdom Show, we are talking about this very important topic because I have a lot of people in my community, clients and patients who want to improve their health using collagen. And they're wondering if bone broth is sufficient or if they need to use a collagen supplement on top of that or instead of that. So let's break this down. What's in bone broth? There actually have been some studies done on this and essentially bone broth as a result of taking bones from things like chicken or beef bones or even fish, putting in some water, putting in some additional ingredients, which I'll discuss and cooking it for a variable amount of time, which I'll also talk about what is the best optimal times and what to add in, ends up being a collection of liquid full of protein, collagen, and what's called amino acids. And these are the building blocks of things like protein and collagen. And collagen is a type of protein. It's a connective tissue protein that's more structural in nature. It's got a unique triple helix structure that provides a matrix around which many things can surround. And that's what provides the elasticity and the firmness and the strength of things like skin and joints and bones. And so protein is a bigger category that collagen belongs to, but there's other kinds of protein, such as protein that's used to create muscles. And that looks very different than collagen, which is used in the skin and the bones. And the difference lies in the amino acid profile. So amino acids are the building blocks of proteins including proteins like collagen. And collagen has a unique profile of amino acids, and that causes different structure and function in the body. Bone broth contains the proteins. If you have, for example, meat that's gone in with the bones, it has the collagen from the bones itself. It has the amino acids, the smaller building blocks of the collagen and protein. And because it has a lot of collagen in it, it's high in certain kinds of amino acids like glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline, which is a very dominant type of amino acid profile in collagen. Plus, depending on what you put in the bone broth, it can have minerals, vitamins, and more. Now, interestingly, in bone broth, when they analyze it, depending on how it's made, it can range from anywhere between 2 to 5% protein content, which means about 4.8 to 12 grams of protein per cup. So you can see it's a pretty wide range, but it does include something between 5 and 10 grams per cup, which will become important in as we go and talk about this versus is collagen supplements. Now this protein is mostly collagen because it's mostly coming from the bones. But as you can see, the content does vary a lot. And that's what the supplement industry really likes to hone in on is, you know, take your supplements because it's more specific and precise. Whereas in the bone broth, it's less precise. You can get anywhere from, you know, five to 10 grams in a cup. Now, the interesting thing is that while this is a variable number, collagen supplements typically contain about five grams or 10 grams. So it's still within the same range. When I buy a collagen supplement, for example, one scoop equals five grams. They tell you to, they tell you to take one to two scoops a day, which is between five to 10 grams per day. Some people will take more 20, 30 grams of collagen per day. And I have a resource video on this very topic. What would you use that for? It probably wouldn't be something you want to do every day, but there are specific instances where you would want to do it. I'll put the link to that video in the caption, which is the writing below the video. But what that means is that in a cup of bone broth, you can get a fairly equivalent amount, although the supplement industries will say that it's less and it's more variable. So bone broth does contain collagen building blocks and signaling molecules because according to, again, this resource I'm sharing below talking about collagen, the collagen supplements and the collagen and bone broth, they work not just as building blocks, but actually to signal the body to make more collagen. So it's a direct and indirect effect on increasing collagen in the body. So when it comes to bone broth, daily use may be enough if you're trying to get a daily dose of collagen, but only if it's made right. So here's some bonus benefits and some tips for cooking bone broth to increase the likelihood that you're going to get some benefits from that bone broth that are fairly equivalent to and maybe even better than collagen supplements. Number one, you can add dried seaweed 
to your bone broth to get a source of natural iodine. You know, iodine supplements are pretty tricky to use to supplement iodine. Most supplements are too high in iodine actually and can cause problems with your thyroid from too much iodine. So getting a natural source of iodine through your bone broth can be very helpful. Number two is you can add vegetables and herbs and spices to your bone broth to increase that nutrient density and content. So you're not just getting collagen, you're also getting a lot more. And that's why I love to use bone broth to cook my rice in and then I give my rice, that rice to the, my kids and they love it because they don't know any better, it just tastes good and it's full of nutrients that they otherwise may not get a chance to have through their diet. Sometimes they're a little bit more picky than, and I know they're getting a fairly consistent source of a little bit of protein, lots of collagen, you know, they're getting a fairly consistent source of that collagen, nutrients, minerals, and vitamins and phytonutrients from plants. Also, if you add apple cider vinegar to the water, it acidifies the water and makes it more effective at pulling out the minerals from the bones. So again, bone health and joint health really come from a combination of the cartilage, the cartilage, the collagen, minerals like calcium, magnesium, boron, phosphorus, Lots of different minerals go into building bones, not just calcium. Now, you know that you've hit the sweet spot for getting enough minerals and collagen out of the bones when you've cooked it for about 24 to 48 hours. And when you go and pinch the bones between your fingers, the bone easily crumbles. So you know that it's become weak because a lot of that supportive structure has gone from the bone into the liquid. So that's what I do. And I add, you know, a good dose of apple cider vinegar. Do I have an exact recipe for that? No, unfortunately, they haven't studied that specific amount. Although I did come across a study a long time ago, and then I can't find it now. So if I do find that study, I will put it in the caption below for future reference. But I remember that they did do a study that compared adding and not adding something like apple cider vinegar, which has acetic acid in it. And the acetic acid causes a lower pH, more acidic pH, and it pulls the nutrients more readily from the bone. If you don't add it, it still works, but not as well. And again, the simple test to know that it's working to pull the collagen and the minerals from the bone is once you're done cooking it, just pinch the bones in between your fingers and it should crumble down. Now, if you have any tips for other viewers on how to make bone broths or things that you find that work for you, please put them into the comments. I'm sure our community would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel at dr.patriciamills. That's the best way to support the Wild Wisdom Show. Save this for future reference and share this. Sharing is caring and you never know when someone might benefit from this wild wisdom. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, or night, depending on when you catch this. See you next time. Bye now.